everybody, it's Nadine again. We're ready for our next session on technology, health, and wellness. And today I'm excited because I am joined by a couple of guests today. Um, I want to make sure I say both of your names right. Is it Stephanie Hebden? Yep. Ah, good. And then Rochelle, how do you say your last name, Rochelle? Billing. Galang. Okay. So I always do like my um, Kevin Bacon, like, how do you know Nadine, like extensions of Nadine. So I know Rochelle because we are both, we were both in the Google Innovator cohort, NYC 19. And I'm just meeting Stephanie now. Um, but I will let both of them kind of give us a background on what they do for their positions. And then we'll get ready to get started. Go ahead. Awesome. Nadine. Thanks, Nadine. Um, I am Rochelle Galang. I am a tech integration specialist um, with a local ISD in Michigan. And I'm Stephanie. Um, I also work with Rochelle at the local ISD, um, but I am placed in a separate district from her. So I am the tech integration uh, specialist for a K-12 district. district. Cool. So we were just reminiscing that, you know, Hey, we're all we all do the same job in the same role. We cover a lot of ground. Um, we're like the solo person to help out those districts. So I'm so glad that they are willing to spread the wealth and share this session with us today. Um, ladies, if you want to go ahead and get started, feel free. Sounds good. So we do have um, a link to our presentation. You'll have access to the slides um, that bit.ly is uh, tech health slash tech health WFH for work from home. Um, we'll drop that in the chat for you as well. But if you have, actually just did, <laughs> if you have a chance to grab like something to write down, a paper and pencil, uh, your phone to take notes, um, we're going to get started taking some time to reflect on our own technology habits. And um, so our first thing we want you to do is we want you to. Think about um, in a day's work, what what technology do you interact with? Um, that might look different now that we're all in this work from home um, atmosphere. Um, but just jot down everything that you use technology related in a day's work. So for me, that's looking like a lot of emails and video meetings. Um, so we'll just give you some time to jot those down. And if you're live with us and you want to type it in, even in the chat, you know, you can do yeah. that as well, too. Absolutely. And let us know who you are and where, you, where you're from and what you teach if you're joining live. So we'll give you 15 more seconds to jot that down. I'm not interacting with interactive flat panels as much as I was in the past. <laughs> All right, now. All right, now the next slide, we want you to think about what type of technology do you use after work? So it looks different now. I used to think of after work as coming home and taking off my shoes. Um, but now even so, think about what, after you close your emails, hopefully you close them for the evening, what kind of technology are you using after that? Are you watching Netflix? Are you texting your friends? What are you doing? Uh, again, you can type this in the chat or write it down on your own. And we have a timer in that upper right hand corner that's about to give you another 30 seconds. <laughs> I'm guilty with the Netflix. Yeah. <laughs> I'm putting mine in there. Oh, I put FaceTime. I meant um, Facebook. That too. All of it. I'm like all of it. <laughs> yeah. I'm all right. So now we want you to decide, take a guess, ballpark estimate, how much time, looking at both those lists that you jotted down, in hours, how much time do you think you spend on a screen each day? You don't have to tell us in the chat, but if <laughs> you tell us, say, you're welcome to. <laughs> it's disgusting how many hours. <laughs> I know, I'm thinking yeah. about it. Like, I think I have, oh 
gosh, it's got to be like 10 hours on technology. I'm on the computer working for eight hours. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So Stephanie's going to walk us through how we can actually check our usage. So, um, of course, this isn't going to check all your usage. We aren't going to know how much you're using your copy copy machine but <laughs> um this is the way to check your usage on your phone um we tried to pick the three brand phones to help you of course if you don't have one of these phones most of them are just in your settings uh, but this is how to check your daily usage to see how much time you actually are using your phone um it'll tell you exactly which apps you're using how long you're using each app and all of that um, so go ahead, check it. And then I'd love to see some comments in the chat of what maybe how long you're using it or what your most usage is. My screen time definitely has picked up since working from home has begun. Um, it'll get my phone has little alerts. It'll say, here's your screen usage. It's up this much. Yeah. The last time you used it. Yeah, I get those weekly notifications and I do too. Not been good. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, wellbeing.google um, is a great website. It's another Google resource we have access to um, with lots of um, ideas for facilitating um, the family. Um, but their mantra is, you know, great technology shouldn't improve, should improve life. It shouldn't distract from it. Um, and I think we all can think of an instance in our lives where, shoot, what did that person say or what just happened? Because I was looking at my phone, um, also guilty of that as well. Um, so that's a really useful resource from Google to um, share with families and parents in your school district as well. Um, to give them ideas that this is not just a student problem. Screen time is a societal problem that everyone has to learn to cope and deal with. So it's a great resource we have from Google. Cool. And then um, we want you to jot down some ways where you can uh, unplug and find balance. You might have a few in mind that you have been trying to incorporate as you're working from home now. Um, we've got some ideas for you. Some of these are, look a little different now, but um, less screen time. I've been trying to go outside. Unfortunately, it's a rainy day in Michigan. Um, so that's in here up today. Um, but one of my favorite ways to unplug is to turn notifications off of certain apps that I want to choose to visit on my own time um, and monitor when I want to go look at them. Um, another fun challenge that I've done before is back when I would be going to the grocery store in person, you know, resisting the urge to pull out your phone while you're waiting in line um, and just practice that patience and allowing that downtime to be in your life. Um, these are all really great ideas to unplug and find balance. And if there's any that you have that maybe you don't see up here, feel free to drop, drop, drop those in the chat as well. <laughs> I know when you said um, disabling the notifications, probably one of my newest ones is disabling it on my watch because like I can put my phone down and, you know, to say, you know, I'm just not even going to look at my phone for a while, but then it's like, I can't get away from it. So I had to immediately change my settings on my smartwatch because it was making you want to go grab your phone. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I've learned to um, turn my watch on sleep mode that, or do not disturb mode. And that way I don't have to like turn the notifications completely off, but I can do do not disturb on my watch. So, okay. It's just a little swipe and it doesn't. <laughs> and another a common rebuttal I get um, is, oh, but I, I have a family emergency that I'm waiting for a phone call or I need, if it's my mom, I need to know, I need to answer it. Well, I actually have my, my mom's phone number set up with a different ringtone and it bypasses my do not disturb. So I mm. see that emergency phone call from that said person who I would be expecting. Um, an emergency phone call from. That's a good tip. Um, 
So you'll notice I'm wearing glasses. I don't normally wear glasses. Um, I'm wearing tech glasses right now um, because I'm spending a lot of time in front of a screen. Um, screens emit blue light, which suppresses our body's natural ability to produce melatonin, which is what we need to sleep, have a good night's rest. Um, so some strategies around that are you can wear tech glasses. They also sell like special screen protectors to filter the light. Um, and Stephanie and I are going to go into some settings and stuff that you can do on your phone, but um, using dark mode emits less blue light as well. But the biggest piece of the puzzle here is not the fancy gadget that you can buy. Um, it's just put it away an hour before bed. Don't, don't go to bed with your phone in hand and stare at your screen, set your alarm, and then put it next to you. Make sure you are spending an hour before bed taking time to wind down. Um, you know, blue light glasses have become a very popular conversation of topic um, now that we're working from home and more people are spending more time on screens. Um, but they don't actually help with eye strain. They just filter <laughs> light. So that's a common misconception we see. Um, if you're struggling with eye strain, you can use the 20-20-20 rule where every 20 minutes that you're staring at a screen, you should take 20 seconds to look away 20 feet ahead of you. Um, that gives our eye muscles a chance to rest. Um, it doesn't matter what you're viewing, that it's like technology. It could be something close up like a jigsaw puzzle or um, a book, but the fact that you're spending extended time staring very closely at something is what your eye strain is coming from. So we have you know, that shows us a little bit about that. Think about how long you stare at a screen, like the one on your laptop, your phone, your TV, your tablet. Nielsen says most people spend, on average, 10 hours a day staring at a screen. Do these screens damage our eyes? I'm a blogger, and yeah, I'm definitely in front of a screen at least 10 hours a day. I grab my phone first thing in the morning, then I use it on the subway commute, all day at work, then a small break for yoga, then on the subway ride home and in bed. Am I damaging my eyes? Are you damaging your eyes? Are we doomed? Here's the good news. Screens aren't going to make us go blind. The devices that we use do not appear to cause long-term eye damage. That's Dr. Rebecca Taylor, an ophthalmologist in Nashville, Tennessee. Instead of real eye damage, you might experience my discomfort, like blurry vision, dry eyes, watery eyes, and tired eyes. These symptoms even have a name. It's called computer vision syndrome. I know my eyes feel heavy after a long day of staring, but a doctor isn't going to worry about my long-term health. So don't be scared by that really intense name. Still, my eyes are irritated and it's annoying. We likely experience computer vision syndrome because we blink less when we stare at a screen. According to optometrist Allison Bozung from the University of Iowa. So our blink rate slows pretty significantly in some studies up to about two thirds, so about 67% slower or less blinking. And it's not easy to consciously blink more. I'm very aware of that. You'll probably look a little bit crazy if you try, so instead, use eye drops to keep your eyeballs moist. Make sure they are for that purpose and not for redness relief. Take breaks too. Most doctors recommend the 20-20-20 rule. 20-20-20 rule. 20-20-20 rule. Which says that for every 20 minutes that you're on a computer or staring at a screen, take 20 seconds to stare at something 20 feet away. It requires more energy to focus at a near target than it does to focus at a distance target. If I was concentrating on a typewriter all day long, would I still have these same symptoms? Absolutely. So it doesn't matter what you're viewing. It matters that you're viewing. After two hours of screen time, take 15 minutes to do anything but stare at a screen. That means don't look at your phone either. Try talking to some humans. I don't know. Other less obvious factors affect our eyes too. It's not just the actual act of staring at a screen that's to blame for our eye problems. The tech we own and the way we use it matters too. Our monitors can contribute to these issues. For example, if your display's refresh rate is 60 hertz, meaning it refreshes its images 60 times a second, your eyes will constantly try to refocus, meaning they'll tire out more quickly. There are muscles inside the eye. If you're gonna sit down at your desk and you're gonna flex your bicep, for eight hours in a row, you may need a little bit of a break. The unfortunate news is that most gadgets feature displays at 60 hertz. You can try buying a new, more expensive gaming display with a faster refresh rate or a new 120 hertz iPad Pro, or maybe even the Razer phone. 
Another more manageable tip relates to your eye's distance from the screen. Keep your monitor an arm's length away from you, so about 25 inches, and position the screen so that you're looking down at it at a 20 degree angle. Your screen's contrast and brightness might also be worth playing around with. Increase the contrast on your screen to make the letters clearer and don't use tiny fonts. I love tiny fonts, so I know this might be annoying aesthetically, but tiny fonts strain your eyes, so ban tiny fonts. Do not use them. Now, I haven't mentioned another big problem you might be battling, which is glare. Glare can make it difficult to stare at your screen and will additionally hurt your eyes. An anti-glare screen filter could help, as can anti-glare coatings on glasses. Also, try to avoid having extreme sunlight on your screen or harsh overhead lighting. Your screen experience is highly dependent on your environment, obviously, so you want to make it perfect. Along with glare, maybe you've heard about blue light coatings and blue light filtering glasses. They're super trendy right now and glasses shops are often trying to convince customers to add them onto their orders. Blue light, these companies say, is a major part of the eye strain problem, but doctors have countered that these special lenses really won't do much to alleviate eye stress. There are several products out there to protect our eyes from our computer, but there's no data that supports that that, that, that is uh, necessary. The American Academy of Ophthalmology doesn't recommend them because they won't affect your actual eye health. Like, they won't prevent macular degeneration or glaucoma. However, companies like Felix Grey, which builds blue light filtering into its lenses as opposed to relying on a coating, still says their tech helps. I met with David Roger, one of the company's co-founders, to talk about blue light filtering and how his company tries to address the eye strain problem. But if you are dealing with that 5 p.m. headache or like, you know, the, your vision's a little bit blurry or you're, you know, you're just rubbing your eyes at the end of the day. Blue light and glare, two of the primary reasons that people are feeling these effects, we filter out 50% of the blue light range. The thing is, there haven't been enough studies that show blue light is harmful for the eye. And David admits his glasses are for short-term comfort. There just needs to be a lot more studies before we're, we're able to say anything conclusively. What we're really trying to say is, hey, the everyday comfort like we're trying to provide that. Lots of scientists agree. Polarization of lenses, anti-glare, all of these things that are available to us help ease those symptoms. It's sort of like a band-aid. They don't treat the symptoms, they just ease the symptoms. It could be good and it's not bad. So I kind of leave it up to people. And you know, it can improve their comfort in the now. In actuality, we need blue light to function as humans. It stimulates us and wakes us up. Blue light could present a problem at night when we need darkness to help us fall asleep because it suppresses melatonin, so filtering blue light could be useful at bedtime, which is why Apple launched Night Shift, although tests of that technology and similar apps are inconclusive. Ultimately, if you're worried about computer vision syndrome or just the amount of screen time your eyes experience, take a break. Don't look at your phone, your TV, or laptop before bed. Read a book, do a crossword, watch the sunset, relax. You know, you look like a A lot of that is easier said than done. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we love that video. It's really informative. Um, and we've got a lot of strategies to help you cope with working in a digital world. So, so one of those strategies um, is installing uh, an extension to remind you to do different things. So we gave you some examples here. There are a ton out there. Uh, you can install an extension that's just a timer or a stopwatch. So you can set your timer for that 20 minutes to remind yourself to look at a window for 20 seconds. Um, you can install Move It. Move It will remind you to do some type of exercise or sometimes they're really like funny movements. Uh, and you can set the time. So you can decide to do it every 20 minutes. You could decide to do it every hour. Uh, just reminds you to get up and move. Then there's the water reminder, which I need desperately because I always forget to drink water while I'm working. Uh, and that water reminder just reminds you to keep drinking water. Uh, the On the video right there, it's showing you an app called Fit On. It's a free fitness app. Um, and what I love about it is it's 10, there's a range, but there's 10 minute exercises in there. And a 10 minute break is perfect from your computer. They're quick exercises you can do right from your desk, or if you have some space, you can get down on the floor and it will take you through some other exercises. Uh, so just some ideas to give you that break from your screen. Nice, I like those. And then um, New York Times has a really great article out. We have that link to our presentation here. So uh, we'll let you visit that on your own time. Um, but it's a really useful article to help you create screen life balance. Um, 
But my favorite takeaway from it is determine which uses of your screens are essential and in what amount. So thinking back to those lists that we made at the beginning of this presentation and how we interact with technology within 24 hours, um, what that screen time is essential and what of it is maybe something we could cut back on or eliminate. Another great thing to look into is uh, a movie called Screen Agers. If you have not seen it or heard of it, I highly suggest uh, seeking it out. Uh, it is a paid movie. They do a lot of uh, presentations with dis school districts and stuff. Of course, a lot of those have been canceled right now. Um, but Screen Agers, what it does is it goes into a family's home and it shows how they sign contracts as a family as to uh, how much time they should have on their devices. I think the important part here is to remember it's not just the contracts for the kids, but also for the parents and talking about how the parents can use technology a little bit less and be part of the family. Uh, so they sign these contracts and come up with everything as a whole family instead of just parents telling the kids what to do. And then they also have a blog. Um, it, it kind of most of the posts are surrounded around internet addiction with students um, and how to cope with that as a family. So if um, the, the blog posts are called Tech Talk Tuesdays, um, you can subscribe to those. Um, I've recommended that to some families in our district as well um, because parents are always looking for more on how to deal with parenting in the digital age. This uh, is a study on what apps make you most unhappy and happy. Uh, it's very interesting to look through them. Some of the ones on the most unhappy are definitely social media. Uh, the first one, a dating app, uh, lots of games on there. And these made users most unhappy. And then if you take a look at the happy apps, uh, the first thing we have is a meditation app. And then we have Google Calendar, which for me, helps me feel organized and makes me happy to see my calendar all organized. Uh, and if you go through those, it's a lot of just mindfulness apps. Uh, so we just wanted you to take a look at this. What apps do you have on your phone that maybe you should delete because they are making you unhappy? And what are some apps that are happy that maybe you want to add to your phone? I know I added Calm recently and it's been a great addition to my apps. I love Calm. I've used that one for years. I love the fact that it's free. Um, the full platform is free for teachers. That was big whenever they released that. Yeah, for us, I think it was just at the beginning of the school year and I shared it with all my teachers, like yeah. this with your ki kids, with yourself, you know, everywhere. Yes. So we're gonna jump into some strategies to help us take control. Um, but this humanetech.com has, um, is a great resource to share out with your school districts and families. Um, we are going to go over examples that are very specific to like an iPhone. We're just going to use iPhone as an example, but the features we're about to show you are available on most devices. So the first tip we have for you is called night mode. Um, I know they mentioned it in that video. What night mode does is it actually dims your screen, takes out a lot of those blue lights. Um, and you can turn that on in your settings and you can turn it on to different times. Some people don't like their screen to be dim so soon. Uh, I think it defaults to like sunset to sunrise, but I set mine to when I'm just winding down to bed and then it turns off when I'm just waking up in the morning. And that really helps dim the screen, get me ready for bed. So just a tip there. Cool. And then dark mode is another one that um, you can you can set um, to turn on. Uh, there's different views for dark mode as well. Um, so you can adjust the brightness um, and that you can activate it for a night shift as well. So dark mode, I typically use dark mode on my phone all times of the day. I do <laughs> too. Sometimes this comes down to a personal preference, um, but dark mode definitely is a good one. Um, there's also Common Sense Media goes over how to change your iPhone to grayscale. Um, this is, our phones are designed for us to want to look at them, which is why they're in color. Those notification bubbles are red to drive you nuts, <laughs> to make you want to clear them away. Um, so there is a way on your phone to change the color filter and the accessibility settings that um, is a good reminder of 
my phone is just a tool and I'm picking it up to use it because I have a task to do. And here's where I go to do that task rather than getting all of that um, added dopamine and addictedness to it. So this is a short um, deal that you shows see a cool you how to do that. You can do with your phone. All you do is you just take your hand like this and you wave it over your phone and it turns to grayscale. Or you take your hand again, just wave it over your phone again and it turns right back into color. I'll do that again for you. Just like that. And if you really concentrate, you can just make it all go away. But if you snap your fingers, it comes right back. Now, why would you do this? Well, because when we're really addicted to our phones, we forget that this is just a tool. What I do to feel less addicted to my phone is I turn it into black and white. Because when it's in black and white in grayscale, uh, whenever you look at your phone, your brain just doesn't feel those exciting rewards. It makes me remember that it's just a tool. So let me show you how you actually set your phone in gray, okay? So first you go into settings, right? And then you go all the way down here to general. And then in general, you go to accessibility. And then in accessibility, you go to display accommodations and you turn on color filters and you just flip color filters from off to on and then set it to grayscale. So you got that? So settings, general, accessibility, display accommodations, and then color filters. Then what you need to make sure you do is go back to accessibility, which is two steps back and go to the very bottom and turn on the accessibility shortcut, which is lets you triple click the home button for color filters. So make sure you just go ahead and check color filters. So now what that lets you do is from any screen in your phone, you just triple tap and it turns it into color. And you triple tap again and it turns it back to black and white. And this is critical because if you are forced to leave it in black and white, what's gonna happen? You're gonna start taking photos or watching videos and it's gonna be black and white. And you're gonna say, oh, this didn't work for me. I gotta switch back to color full time. But the cool thing is you can actually turn your phone also into a magic trick. Because if you just wave your hand over the phone like that, at the same time that you triple tap, and it makes this really cool effect that now it goes black and white, and it goes back to color. Or if you're a really advanced magician, you just do that and all the icons just go away completely. That one's for you to figure out. So I actually, um, I have a newer iPhone. It doesn't have the home button at the bottom of it anymore. Um, but if you do the triple click um, with the side button, I have it set up for that. It's really easy to quickly toggle between black and white and color again, because there are some things that are very necessary to see in color. Um, but I do like having it in black and white because again, it's reminding me this is just a tool. And I picked it up because I have something to do. Not, oh, I got a Facebook notification. Shoot, let me check that one real quick before I go to that email that I was supposed to do that was work-related. Um, so it's really helpful with the distracted distraction. I um, need to do that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then like battery life and low power mode. A lot of people don't know you can turn low power mode on at any time. Um, some people think you got to wait till your phone is like down to 20%. Um, you can toggle that on anytime as well. And it's really good for making your battery last longer. Cool. Another thing you can do is to help save your battery and your privacy is to turn location services off when you don't need it. Um, a lot of times apps are always using your locations. So if you go into your settings, you can actually choose which apps have your location. Uh, you can change apps to only use your location while the app is open. That way it's not always using your la uh, location. It drains your battery significantly when it's trying to track where you are at all times. So I make sure all of my apps are either not using my location or are only using the location when I have the app open because there are apps that actually need my location. Um, but you can also turn it off if you're trying to save your battery. I know uh, when I go to Disney World, I turn off my location services because I know where I am in that uh, magical place. And so I turn it off to save my battery to make sure I can use uh, the Disney app to check the lines. So, <laughs> <laughs> Pro tip. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> um, this is a, a trick that some people don't realize their phone can do. Um, taking pictures and video simultaneously. Um, 
my favorite example for this is, uh, you know, when you're at the birthday party and you, you, mom, you take pictures, I'll take video. You don't have to worry about that anymore. Like I can just go ahead and record the video. And while the video is recording, I can also press the circle in the bottom and take snapshots at the same time. So <laughs> that's always a fun one that people are like, oh, I didn't know it could do that. Yeah. Another tip uh, is freeing up space. So you can always go check what your uh, what storage and what taking up the most space. Uh, I think a lot of people always know, oh, I just need to delete some photos. But what they usually find surprising is it's usually text messages that are taking up the most space. Um, well, I do have a lot of photos in this picture. You can see I actually have more text messages there. Uh, so when you see this, you can go delete a bunch of your texts. You definitely don't need text from 2014 anymore. So go delete some of those. Uh, that'll help give you space on your phone and help it run better. Uh, the Measure app is a really helpful one as well. Um, uses AR to measure things. Um, we also have a built-in level on our phones. They're pretty intuitive. If you open it up, it'll give you directions on how to use both of those features. Another tip is to turn on Do Not Disturb While Driving. Uh, I have this turned on, so every time my phone connects to Bluetooth in my car, uh, it knows to turn on Do Not Disturb While Driving. This makes me feel better because if someone texts me, they get a text in return that says, "I'm driving. I'll return when or I'll, I'm driving. I'll respond when I'm done." Uh, and for me, I don't. I always feel like, "Oh my gosh, that person is going to think I'm ignoring them if I don't respond right away." And so, if I have this turned on, at least they I do respond right away, just letting them know I'm driving. Uh, so, highly suggest turning that on for safer driving. Uh, reader mode is another good one that'll help with eliminating visual noise. Um, so if you're trying to like read an article um, or watch a video, um, if you don't want to see all the side comments or the ads thrown in there, you can use that full screen mode on videos or you can enable reader mode when you've got like a website pulled up with articles and you're scrolling and shoot, where's the rest of the article? Oh, underneath this giant picture of this pair of pants that I was looking at yesterday on Safari, right? <laughs> To eliminate that visual noise, you can use that reader mode, which is really helpful. And that's in Safari on the iPhone. Yes. Uh, another thing you can do is you can turn off ad tracking if you want. What ad tracking does is it tracks what you're searching. So if you're searching for those new shoes that you need for the summer, and then all of a sudden you see the ads for those same shoes popping up on Facebook or Instagram or whatever, uh, that happens to me all the time, you can actually turn off ad tracking. You're still going to get ads. It's not turning off ads. There's no way to do that, but it will turn off the tracking. So then you're not tempted to buy those shoes five other times before you actually buy them. <laughs> you know, it's a matter of time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we've got a lot of other resources linked here, some extensions. Um, Noisly is one of my favorites. I use that um, just to have a calmer environment. Um, I like I like noise when I work. Some people need absolute quiet, um, but that extension will let you like listen to a crackling fire or uh, the forest sounds. Or um, I like a lot of noise, so I like the coffee shop one. Mm -hmm. um, just like clanking plates and mumbled conversation in the background, but it helps me focus when I'm actually spending time on a screen. Um, data detox is another uh, challenge, I guess, um, that Mozilla put out where you kind of reflect on your habits and um, re realize what data is being tracked um, and how to detoxify from that. Um, tech wellness is also um, a really useful blog that has um, posts about like anything from EMFs to screen time um, to 5G, all sorts of stuff. So Tech Wellness is another useful blog. Um, the Like Movie is similar to Screenagers. Um, it goes over teens and um, internet addiction um, and how we're addicted to likes, whether it's from TikTok or Instagram or whatever it is, we're addicted to likes. Um, so that's another good resource to check out. There's um, another one that's on Netflix. Uh, I think it's called Social Animals. Yes. That one is really good mm -hmm. to watch too. Yeah. Um, and now we are having a lot of conversations too about like the physical cleanliness of our devices. 
We use our devices all the time um, in all spaces. Um, we use them in the bathroom. <laughs> um, <laughs> and now we're trying to disinfect them from COVID-19. So uh, bone soap is a tool that disinfects our devices using UV light. Um, when we recommend cleaning our devices to our districts, you know, reminders to have it unplugged before you're wiping it down, um, things like that. Pathways to Wellbeing is a book that ISTE has out on how to thrive and be well when your work is tech heavy. Um, Bored and Brilliant is another great book that Manoush uh, Zomodori has out. Um, Thriving with Technology podcast. We have some podcasts linked in here as well. Um, how to Break Up with Your Phone is another good book. Um, and they actually have a website, Screen Life Balance, um, which has daily challenges as well that you can um, subscribe to via email. Um, so we're leaving you with a lot to dive into to explore at your own pace because technology, health, and wellness is a very big umbrella. Um, I think a lot of time it's associated with screen time, especially right now, but it encompasses so much more. So we have a lot listed here for you guys to explore um, when you get a chance. And then yeah, these are really good. So as we just finish up here, we want you now to reflect on everything we just gave you, all the tips and tricks. Uh, what are some things that you will start doing? Maybe some apps you're going to add to your phone. Um, what are some things you're going to stop doing? So some apps you might need to delete or notifications you need to turn off. And then what are some things that you're going to continue doing? And those things that you're, maybe you were already doing some of these things uh, or something we didn't mention, let us know something that you've been using that has really helped. And sometimes it's as simple as giving ourselves permission. Um, on my desk at work, I have a sticky note stuck to my monitor that gives, it's written to me from me that gives me permission. When I get a ping, I do not have to click on it the second it pings. <laughs> So sometimes those little reminders, <laughs> yeah, giving yourself the permission to like not rush all the time. So right. thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having us, Nadine. Um, we yeah. do well. Um, we hope everyone's staying healthy and well uh, and safe. No, and these tips were great. I'm so glad that I had you guys on today so you could share a lot of these resources. I obviously too need to go through all of these, but I think all three of us in this position, it's, it's taken its toll with, you know, being online so much and trying to uh, help everybody out with, you know, I mean, that's our passion. That's what we love to do. But I like the fact that you guys were able to share many ways for us to get better at it. All right. Well, thanks so much, everybody, for joining us. Um, again, uh, that's their information if you want to reach out to them. And if you're watching the replay, um, I will have a link in the YouTube uh, link that'll have a, you know, that'll have that link out to their resources. All right. Thanks so much, ladies. Thank you. Thank you.